Topic five is cycles in the environment. We talk about how matter in the environment goes from one place to another and ends up recycling itself all through the environment, all in natural processes. So for instance, um, plants get eaten by herbivores, um, herbivores get eaten by carnivores, carnivores die and get broken down by decomposers and then the decomposers return those nutrients that have been passed around the environment back to the plants and the plants get them again out of the soil. Of course plants can die and decomposers can return them back to the environment as well. Same with herbivores. So cycles can get pretty complex. We're going to go through two cycles. Okay, the carbon cycle. Carbon is very important. Carbon is uh, the element of life, basically. All living things are made of carbon. That's very, very important. So where do we find carbon? Carbon mainly is found in the atmosphere, um, just up in the air, as carbon dioxide. That's what CO2 means. Now, carbon dioxide is taken up by plants through the process of photosynthesis. And that's how plants take in carbon into their structures. And they start making sugars and starches and cellulose out of carbon dioxide. So the whole plant is now made of carbon. It's in the DNA and it's in every part of every molecule, every cell. Then carbon gets cycled through the environment from there. Um, animals eat the plants, herbivores. Here's a moose who eats the plants and it then takes all the carbons that were in the plants and a lot of them get stored in the body of the moose. Some of it gets expelled as wastes. Um, but the moose also gets rid of carbon every time it breathes. When we break down the food we eat and use that food for energy, part of the waste products is carbon dioxide and we breathe it back out. So photosynthesis and respiration are two processes that are opposite of each other. One brings in carbon dioxide and stores it in the cells. The other breaks down molecules that are made of carbon and we release carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere. Another really important part of the carbon cycle is the oceans. In the oceans there are lots of plankton all represented by all those little green dots there over here and the plankton settles to the bottom of the ocean and over lots of time um, as it starts to dec decay and there's lots of pressure as these plankton get buried and over time they form what's called fossil fuels and lots of carbon is stored in fossil fuels now we dig up the fossil fuels and we turn them into oils and gases and we burn them and when we burn fossil fuels we're returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere again now the problem with that is it's not sustainable we burn fossil fuels much faster than they'll ever be replaced another process uh, where carbon dioxide can travel is into the oceans it gets dissolved in the water and the water just basically can store carbon dioxide and that's an issue with global warming actually or climate change is as the climate warms the carbon dioxide is released from the water because as the water gets warmer it can't hold as much carbon dioxide so it can go back to the atmosphere and one more method the trees now if they catch fire there's a forest fire when they burn they return carbon dioxide to the atmosphere as well. So really the most important process here would be photosynthesis because without photosynthesis we're not really able to capture the carbon dioxide and make it useful and we all need carbon to live and it all starts with photosynthesis really. The next cycle that we need to talk about is the water cycle. So here's a picture of a environment, got some mountains, rivers, lake or an ocean, 
And let's start with the, the water over here. Let's start with the ocean. The water heats up, especially the surface of the water. The molecules on the surface start moving faster and they do something called evaporate. They actually turn from a liquid state to a gas state and they evaporate, rise up into the air. Another way that water gets up into the air is through trees. Uh, the leaves all have little holes in them called stomata and they actually use these holes to breathe out. The trees are taking up water from the ground and they use that water in photosynthesis but some of the water is actually lost through the leaves and the process where water is lost through the leaves is called transpiration. It's sort of like evaporation but it's water coming out of the leaves of plants so we give it a special name. Um, so both of those cases once the water reaches up here into the sky, it's vapor, but it starts to cool and it goes through a process called condensation, where it starts to form little tiny water droplets. Um, you've seen water drops on the outside of a cold pitcher of Kool-Aid. That's condensation. It's water from the air, actually, condensing on the cold surface of the pitcher. Well, the same thing happens in the sky. That's how our clouds are formed. It's condensation. Then so much water can form in the clouds, the clouds can get bigger, and they can start to release all that water that's built up in the atmosphere as precipitation. It's raining. Um, the precipitation hits the ground, and then a couple of things can happen. It can pool on the ground, it can start to form rivers and streams, and we're going to see here it flows down into the lake or into the ocean as runoff or some of it can actually seep into the ground and become what's called groundwater and that's where most of the fresh water on earth is actually stored is actually underground the groundwater can be released if we dig wells lots of people have wells that they dig into the groundwater and the water can then be released that way or it can eventually can make its way into our rivers and streams where it can go back through the cycle, it can evaporate again, condense, precipitate, run off, and the cycle just goes on and on and on and on forever. Uh, something interesting to think about is if you think way back to the dinosaur times, the water a dinosaur drank, you may have passed it through as waste and maybe got into the groundwater and over thousands of years eventually made it back into the lake, evaporated, precipitated groundwater again, we pull it up through a well, we drink it. So the water, the same water that the dinosaurs were drinking is still around today. The same atoms are still around today, they just keep getting cycled through the environment. So the two cycles we've talked about, carbon and water, they're probably the two most important cycles, they're the two most important elements of life. Um, nothing can exist without carbon and all life requires a lot of water in order to survive. Our bodies are actually 60 to 70 percent water. So everything cycles through the environment. Water, carbon, energy cycles through the environment. All sorts of matter cycles in our environments. Um, sometimes we put things into the environment that are actually harmful and if these things are put into the environment faster then the environment can actually take care of them, absorb them, break them down, then that's what we call pollution. It's adding harmful substance to the environment faster than the environment can handle them. And the substances that are being added to the environment that aren't breaking down, that are harmful, those are called pollutants. Now a few different pollutants that are mentioned in the textbook that you should know about are PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, uh, they're substances, they were used in packaging, they were used in paints, and we never meant for them to get into the environment, but they did. They leaked out of uh, waste disposal sites into the water, into the ground, and they don't get broken down very quickly, and they're still in the ground today. They still cause pollution, and they cause harm to the organisms that are uh, exposed to them. Another one is mercury. Mercury also can leak into the environment through disposal sites, 
it gets into the water, dissolves in the water, and organisms uh, end up taking mercury into their tissues, and it causes all sorts of problems. It can cause nervous damage, it can cause mental health problems. Your body just can't function properly with mercury in it. There's a disease called the Mad Hatter's disease. People that used to make hats used a lot of mercury in their hat making process, so they had lots of mercury exposure and they ended up getting mercury into their tissues and they would go mad, they'd go crazy because of mercury poisoning. And DDT. DDT was a pesticide used to kill insects and it was sprayed onto crops and trees but it had a side effect that we didn't predict. It made birds eggshells soft and the chicks couldn't survive. So it killed a lot of birds, especially the peregrine falcon. Some chemicals get into the air and they mix with water and they form a substance called acid rain. These are nitrogen compounds and sulfur compounds. They're produced from burning fossil fuels. They get into the air, they mix with water in the air, and they create acid rain, rain that's acidic. And that's bad because if water gets too acidic, then organisms can't survive. Um, fish are particularly sensitive to acid rain. Another problem with pollutants is they can actually accumulate in the body tissues of all the animals that are exposed to the pollutant. And as those organisms get eaten and they go further and further up the food chain, the pollutants actually don't leave the body. They start to accumulate. So we see something called bioaccumulation. So we see that the top of the food chain actually is affected the most. So if you're a microscopic organism living in a lake that's polluted with mercury, you're not getting affected very much by the mercury because it's tiny little amounts that are in your body tissues. But if you're the organisms that are eating these microscopic ones and then getting eaten by larger and larger fish, and then you're the human that's surviving off eating the large fish from the lake, um, those large fish and the humans eating the large fish are going to be affected most by the mercury that's in the lake. So that's the end of our video today. Thanks for watching.